Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be continuing to do vectors, but we're going to use these to actually find some, some more complicated things. So, not everything goes straight up and left and right. Um, we first are going to start with a little warm up with that. A weather balloon is raised and rises at a constant speed of 15 meters per second relative to the ground. And then the wind blows eastward at 6.5 meters per second. What is the velocity of the balloon? Well, it's going up at 15 meters per second, but it's also going eastward at 6.5 meters per second. Notice how I've just combined these vectors from uh, tail to head and head to tail. Um, so we got 15 meters per second and 6.5 meters per second. And we need the resultant vector. We need to find out how quick this balloon is moving combined. And it's not just going to be um, as simple as adding them together because we're not really going up and then over separately. We are going this kind of diagonal distance like so. So with that in mind, we would need to use the Pythagorean theorem. 15 squared plus 6.5 squared would equal c squared or the resultant velocity squared. And if you do the math for that, you will get 17.2 meters per second by adding the 225 and whatever 6.5 squared is and square rooting. Okay. So that is velocity of balloon. The resultant angle would be found always with the x-axis. So we really have like this triangle. Um, and you need to find that angle. If you need to find that angle as a refresher, it would be tan negative 1. The opposite would be here. Your adjacent would be there. And we have our opposite is 15. And our adjacent is 6.5. So if you did 15 over 6.5, you would end up with a resultant angle of 67 degrees. And it always says, use the angle with the x-axis. That's known as the reference angle in pre-calculus. Reference, I don't know how to spell reference, angle. Okay, that was the quick warm-up. The harder problems for today are two forces that act on uh, as shown. If we want to find the x and y components of the resultant force, we would need to do some work. We need to find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force as well. So, in order to do this, we need to, essentially we want to add these two things together to find the x and y components of the resultant force. In order to do that, you need to find the resultant force of, like the x component, would be the force of the x for A and the forces of the x for B. Okay, so what that means is you need to find the x value for this guy, the 12 newton one, and the x value for the 10 newton one, and then add them together. All right, so how do we find the x components of each? You notice I just drew an, a line directly to the x-axis, and we can think of this as the x value that we are needing. And we can use cosine, because this is 12, and this is adjacent, of the angle 45, cosine of the angle 45, would equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which would equal x over 12. We're gonna end up multiplying by 12. So for a, I'm calling this one a, it would be 12 cosine of 45. And then to do b, it'd be the same exact thing, but it would be changing the angle and changing the force. So it would be adding not 12, but 10, and not 45, but 30. And if you do the resultant math from that, you can get the resultant of all the x components is equal to do 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 time out negative ten. Why is it negative ten? Are we going in the positive direction over here? That would be a negative x. So be careful that you are paying attention to direction because these are caring about directions with that. 12 cosine 45 minus 10 cosine 30 ends up being, when you type it into your handy dandy calculator, negative 0.17. So that would be the resultant x direction, which means that if we were to combine these two vectors together, because it is a little bit further to the left, your resultant vector is most likely going to look something like this, I'm guessing, and where it's slightly to the left. Okay? So let's find out the y component. Well, the y component is going to be found the same way. The resultant of the y's would equal the resultant of the y's for a, 
added with the resultant of the y's for b. Well, the only difference that you will have is that instead of looking at your adjacent side, you're gonna be looking at your opposite side. And your opposite side is gonna be found with sine instead of cosine. So if we did that, the resultant of the y's would be essentially equal to sine of 45 um, equals opposite over a uh, hypotenuse, which would be y over 12, which we would multiply by 12, so it would be 12 sine of 45. Same thing on the other one with the 10 Newton, plus 10 sine of 30, and you might be like, wait a minute, Mr. Stone, you did minus on the cosine one, should it be minus on the sine one here? And the answer is no. Which direction are both of these pointing? They are pointing up. The y direction is up, the y direction is up, so these are both positive for the sine values. So the resultant of the y's should be positive for both, and if you add both of those together, you get 13.49, which my prediction turns out to be pretty accurate. I told you that it would be left by a little bit, but I did say that it was gonna be up. This resultant vector that I keep scribbling in here is right there, where we went up by about 13, and we went over by negative 0.17. So this part would be 0.17 to the left, and this part would be 13.49 up, okay? Find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. We have just now found the x and y com uh, components of the force, which actually goes pretty quick. You're gonna get quicker and quicker at this because you may notice it's kind of just a formula, okay? It's the cosines and the sines of both. When you wanna find the resultant, magnitude, that indicates the hypotenuse of this new triangle that I drew, we would need to do the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem, and then the resultant direction of the force would be using our angle that would be needed as well. So let's start by finding the hypotenuse, that would be 13.49 squared plus technically negative 0.17 squared would equal the C squared or the resultant um, magnitude squared. So if you do that math, you end up with do, 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 uh, pretty close to 13.49. You end up with 13.5 for the resultant magnitude. So that means that this hypotenuse right here is 13.5. In order to find the res direction of that resultant force, we are looking for the angle in between. So I'll redraw it over here because I'm out of space. We have... 13.49 here, we have 0.17 there. We need the angle of that resultant force. And if we do that, we would end up with tan negative one of 13.49 over negative 0.17. You do the math for that, tan negative one 13.49 divided by negative 0.17, and you end up with technically negative 89 degrees, 0.27, um, which would tell you that it is going backwards by that amount, uh, but it really is just the angle right here. This angle is 89 degrees that away. Uh, and you could think of it from a few different ways. You could think of it as like, well, if it's 89 that way, it's 91 from this direction, it's 89 from that direction. There's a lot of different ways that you need to prospectively think about it. Don't just immediately think negative 89 because negative 89 is technically right here, going backwards from the x direction. Um, I would say positive, personally. All right, or, or, or I would say 91 degrees from the x direction. Long story. Not really physics, but it, it, it does play in the field. That's going to do it for this one. And the next one, we're going to be talking about using these vectors in actual kinematic equations. So look forward to seeing you there. Stay positive, my friends. Physics is tough, but you can get through it. Bye.